cayó ese yo no, no ¿Cómo que se te cayó? No, 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 no. Yo me fui para adelante para el equipo. Hay que buscarlo. Todos los equipos, todos los equipos tienen que tener un GPS de cada equipo. Boys, we got some drama. What's up guys, Javier from That Racing Channel. Welcome back to another one. Today we're at Hydro Drags 2023 in Lake Alfred, Florida. Word is some of these jet skis are making upwards of 1400 horsepower. Running massive turbochargers, nitrous, methanol, you name it. Last time we were at Hydro Drags, we filmed the world record, which was 135 mile per hour on the water. <laughs> see a lot of familiar faces here today. We're gonna to go ahead and catch up with some of the teams, see what changed on some of these setups, and then get into some racing. insane guys 142 mile an hour on the water on a jet ski that's a bad mother congrats bro thank you bro thank you bro Felicidades. yeah i know vengo ahora vengo ahora dame mi familia vengo ahora let him go to his family what, what, do you, what do you think about that brother oh man you were out there bro man second time being out there with them and he breaks his own record so that's that's amazing amazing it right? feel amazing to dude, that's experience it from up close. I know, dude. Oh, man. Tell me you got some good photos of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> definitely, man, man definitely. This is, this, is, this is the man right here. He does all the photography for this event. And it's so badass, brother. Thank I love you. what you do, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice. So the official GPS yeah, this. My GPS. We're not going off the rider's GPS. He's complaining about the GPS. He wanted his GPS on that speed. If the GPS Sí, lo fueron a buscar a mi campa. Porque la tiene que haber un GPS de cada equipo. Sí o no. Como siempre ha sido. Y el GPS se cayó en el agua. Nunca apareció. Estaba en mal. Pero no que se cayó. No sé, eso dice él. Y apareció ahora con 91 millas. No sé. Ahora mismo se lo van a dar de dar. Boys, we got some drama. Apparently, the other team gave him a GPS because they wanted to confirm it on their GPS, but the GPS went missing before or after the pass. Not sure. They said it fell off. But a little bit of drama going on. But they did have two official GPSs on board of the ski when he made the pass from the event. The event saying they don't allow personal GPSs. Whatever GPSs you want me to use, give me as many GPSs you want, I'll put it on the ski, I'll go to a flat spot. 
No, no. He's here. 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 That's not, I know, it doesn't matter. So what, that, that's you didn't try for benefit. You didn't, don't do it. Listen. Don't count it. Go out there and run what you guys run. Don't count it. So don't, don't count it. That's it. Don't count it. Don't run. But don't listen. You guys are racing me. We are. We're well, racing me. And not, not a month. Not a fucking year. Right not a fucking year. Right, right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Let's go. No, no. Right now. 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 Right Right now, who? Right now, who? Right now, who? Guys, race director said unofficial. Ah, it's the one unofficial. We don't agree. Some other time. What is jumping? What is not good? Congratulations. Nice work. Jose, what's up, brother? Hey, how are you doing? Dude, congratulations, bro. So thank it's you, been, I don't know, two or three years since we saw you last. Three years, yes. And last time you went like 135, yes. and you blew that out of the water. No, no pun intended, but 142 mile an hour was it? 142, yes. Dude, that's that's incredible, dude. That it's it's awesome, but also absolutely insane at the same time. <laughs> yes, it was with the condition we had today. It was really tough. Oh man, yeah, it was it was real choppy out there. Yes, yeah, a lot of wind too. He was going sideways on top end. Yes. 100 mile an hour on a jet ski is, is pretty ridiculously fast, and you're talking about creeping up to that mid 140 range i mean what so what does that feel like and especially like on something like today yeah. what goes through your head when you're so again, i mean it's so choppy and all that 10, i mean everything happens so fast yeah you just want to get it through quick you next. know it's like you on there you don't even know what's going to happen like today i was you know one of the scariest time i've been on a ski i was really scared because i was so violent you know yeah but yeah. you got it done they got it done yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's not official but we got some good number that's a good thing yeah absolutely and we proved that we Once go again, faster than this i gotta say how how long i mean it seems like you're really experienced riding in, in riding, riding skis seven. how long you been riding skis since 1998 you know 25 years yeah. so that's like you're probably like an og in the game out here yeah i started with two strokes you know and move on so how much power were they making in, in that 1998 135 135 horsepower yeah and now this thing's probably damn near 14 1,500 horsepower, something you know, yeah, like around the area, yeah. Man, that's that's nuts. Yeah. And, and what? So what was your top speed like back then on on a Probably similar 60, type of race? Six, 64 miles per hour speed. 64 back then. mile an hour was was like top dog back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, back then, yeah. And then what? Supercharged came after that. Supercharger came, SVHO, Endocido, four stroke. You know, then we started messing with turbos. Turbos changed the game, huh? Yes, it did. <laughs> it's an easy way to go fast. So good to see you. Thank Congratulations. You. Okay. You're a freaking madman in the best way, right, and uh, I hope to see you out again soon, man. All right, thank you. Thanks, bro.
Yo, yes. what's up, brother? What up? It's good to see you, man. Good to see you. It's been a couple of years since we've been out here. Yeah. And we came back out to check out the pretty much the craziest jet skis in the world. Just like last time, you're in the heat of things. <laughs> we don't disappoint you. Give us a rundown, man. You guys made a hell of a pass. And you went 142. Yeah. And there was a little bit of drama going on there, but you know, we'll get we'll get into that. But yeah. but give us a rundown on the ski, how what have you guys been doing, what you guys have changed and all that good stuff. So now we got rid of all the uh all the water-cooled factory intake manifold, exhaust manifold. We run Gato exhaust hot header now, and we run a Gato intake manifold as well. Uh, we changed the turbo to a 76.85. We also changed one that changed the M1 fuel and a dual injector. Talk about some changes. Yeah. That sounds like that sounds like about two to three hundred horsepower. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I would think so. Jesus. But it just helped with the consistency of the engine. I guess the the M1 helps stuff stay together, right? At that at that like at those yeah. boost levels and amount of heat those things are producing. I mean, yeah. you got a four cylinder engine, it's got to be cranking out 1400 or something, or you know, yeah, I mean, if you had I, gas I know, based yeah. off fueling or something, you know. Yeah. Boost wise, we're running like uh, 68 pounds, and uh, you know, nitrous as well on top. Nitrous on top. Yeah. Dude, how much so, you guys spraying? You know, it's over over 100. <laughs> so I won't I won't disclose how much, but we started finding the limitations of the block. We started splitting blocks from the horsepower, so now I can't run all the power that it could run. I have to keep it on like maybe 70. percent Jose Luis has got a set on him, bro, because I, don't know what, I wouldn't I don't touch know. this thing with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> I don't even know how he wanted to even do it. I mean, look, we're three years later, and the 135 is still not even broken. Right. It's so like, so last time, to give people an idea, it's been three years. You guys flew pretty much all the competition out of the water last mm -hmm. time with 135 which i don't know what the record was before that it was, it was like almost 128 yeah, so, so we put like, seven on it it was a good jump yeah and that held for three years that yeah. just shows how difficult this is and what you guys are doing you know to hold a record i mean drag racing stuff gets thrown and you know stuff gets broken every month yeah right? like records, yeah i mean it's that. you're pushing the limits and they try every year it's not like somebody's not going out there they're going out there multiple bolts to try to break that record so i know you guys also changed to a fuel tech any other really changes is there like different like anything with like a hole or like any any other aspects of it that you guys kind of learn i mean yeah it's just from the from the last time the biggest the biggest change is power you know we're always messing around you're always tinkering around with things. It's just like, just like in the car world. You're always tinkering with something for the track. We're doing the same thing. We're figuring out, you know, if we add this amount of power and then we do this, you know, we're running a certain RPM, whatever RPM we run, how does that react? And we're just looking at information, basically. What's crazy is conditions were not ideal today. It's safe to assume that on a glass lake, you guys could have eaten possibly got even faster. Yeah, I mean, according to the according to what I look at the data log, yeah. It, there was a point where the ski was just, it wasn't gonna go anymore because of the conditions. There's probably, in a, in a jet ski setting it up right at a jet ski at this horsepower, there's, if somebody wants to get on it and test it, there's, there's 165 mile an hour sitting in it. You know, it's just, yeah, we, we added a lot of power to it, but a seven mile an hour jump that's, that's big, there's, there's tinkering around, there's other things that come into play. But there's definitely a lot of speed left in it. So give us a rundown on the competition itself for people that maybe have never seen what you guys were doing. I know it was called Speed Alley and it was top speed, yeah. but there was also some drama that went on. So I don't know if you kind of want to explain a little bit uh, about the event and how all that went. So we do everything with GPS because you can't guarantee that the water conditions right in front of everybody is going to be perfect. And when you're trying to go for a speed, you need perfect conditions. So sometimes we have to drive to different parts of the lake, but we have GoPro 360s all over the ski and they point at the two GPSs. So there's two official GPSs that are facing the GoPro at all times. I guess the event provides the... The, the event provides the GPSs and they, you know, they're labeled. The other competition, also we like to take one of their GPSs just to show them like, hey, look, there's nothing, this is your GPS, we took it, we ran that number on your GPS. It's just for our own kind of like talking. On the first pass, the ski lost the lost signal and it shut off. And when that happened, which you'll see on a GoPro video, the, the, that third GPS from them went and like flung around inside the ski and landed up by the mirror of the ski. Oh wow. So it was a okay, zip time on the front. So and then when it when it did that and banged on the mirror and then fell in the footwell, the footwell was wet, so the GPS got wet and it and it shut off. At that point their GPS only said 91 mile an hour. Jose just put it in the glove box. So the hell with it, who cares with that shit? Because that's not the official GPS. I told him just go make another pass. You know what are you gonna do? We're out here. You gotta make you only got 10 minutes. Just make another pass. If it shuts off again, it shuts off again, the hell with it. 
but it didn't. He, able to, he, was able to, he was able to run it, make a three second hit or three and a half second hit. And that's all we need to go a number like that. It did it, it made the number, but unfortunately theirs was off. All right, so, so when he came so back, they made a big stink about it. Leg, uh, but even though uh, those are the those the official two, GPSs, they, they didn't care. There's two GPSs, one's at 141, one's at 142. Obviously on the official GPSs, you always go off the higher, whatever one's reading higher. And theirs said 91 mile an hour. So he, he made his stink and, and that was the whole thing. So I got kind of, I went over there and got involved and you know, the whole talking starts and I basically told him like look if you don't believe it then the hell would it make it unofficial go out there if you go out there and break the record I'll go behind you and put the number again the officials wanted to just stand behind their guns like oh that's our GPS's that's what we're doing and that was it but when I came in and said that then they kind of like you know it's on camera they got to like take it back so which I don't it's it's fine but they went out there they went 132 so now you're more than three years later they went 132 the record's still 135 no matter how you look at it so unofficially it's 142, officially it's 135. We still have it. So essentially, you're saying 142 doesn't count for you. It doesn't yeah, count for the, the event, yeah. But technically, this ski right here is the fastest one along. There hasn't been a ski other than that on the water, right? It's the like, fastest period. recorded long ski in the world. Yeah, I mean, we can do it again and again. I mean, we went 141 last October 22nd. That was before the other race. But just unfortunately, something happened. We had an engine problem when he went to go make the pass, but we still won that event with a 131 in like one and a half seconds. Fortunately today, we lost this event with their 132, but we still leave with the record intact. For me, I kind of look at it as now we got two records. Well, congratulations. You guys always put on a show when we come out here. We can't thank you enough for uh, just having us out here. Yeah. Cool. Appreciate you guys coming. Yeah, man. We're always happy to be here. brother hey man thank I, you I, it's re it's very good to see you we're out at hydro drags 2023 it's really good to see you out here you got a, a really cool jet ski behind you you're getting in all sorts of stuff man, <laughs> oh, man. Tell, tell us what, what you got going on man it's a pleasure also uh, i mean i've been always looking for new challenges and the last year when i came here to hydro drags i really got infected with the willing to do something different uh, so we built this this jet ski not to be the fastest, not to be the quickest, but to do different. So everybody said you cannot do a compound turbo with a supercharger on a jet ski. We did it. So everybody was saying that oh yeah, a lot of the problems with the Yamaha engine is like oil problems or oil supply problems could not be fixed. We fixed it, and uh, obviously. Being uh, from FuelTech, our challenge is to create the, like the plug and plays and the harnesses for all applications. But in reality, I use that as an excuse some of the times to build some cool stuff. Yeah. So we literally did everything we we learned from the car world into this. Obviously, there's very specific difference between cars and jet skis that we've been learning, especially on the pump and the hood. Uh, but the engine was kind of a cool challenge because we could show some of the really different stuff so let me get this straight this has what looks to be like a massive garret turbocharger but it also has a, a target yeah so we kept the stock supercharger and the first time we broke a few of them because obviously it's not hand not built to handle so much boost so we ended up developing literally an upgrade kit for the supercharger to hold but the, imp the impeller on the supercharger is stock so supposedly the stock impeller which makes 14 pounds of boost now it's being fitted by this uh, Garrett G42 1450. For example, we're running 55 pounds of boost on the engine, but the turbo is only making 26 on the intake of the supercharger, and the supercharger multiplies that to become 55 pounds of boost. The biggest benefit, in my opinion, is that you won't, you don't have compound on exhaust only on the in, on the cold side. Uh, the exhaust only has like 10, 15 pounds of back pressure, so I have 55 pounds of boost with. 15 pounds of back pressure. Wow. With the engine, it really loves that and makes a lot more horsepower than if I had a lot of back pressure. And this is the only one of this kind of turbo, size of turbo, not running nitro. So I can run, since I have the compound, it actually spools up so fast and almost like a small turbo with a big turbo. And it makes the top end power. And honestly, I'm in love with this combination. At the beginning, everyone said, oh, it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And a few supercharger broke. I was like almost giving up, but then we say, no, let's fix the problems. We understand the principle. We understand what has to be done. Let's do it. So that's where you guys, we... You guys are here. You guys did it. Yeah. And you're racing this today, right? Yeah. Having some fun with it? 
that's the first time ever I would race on a jet ski race, so I didn't even practice to have an idea. Oh my God. So I, I'm already, I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm not really big expectations. I almost, I honestly, I'm so happy to and grateful to be here, meet these these guys that are doing huge history on drag racing. I mean, Brian, the guys, Jose, the world record, they just switched to Futex, so uh, and beat the new record or oh, unofficial, but it's a big, big thing for me. Very grateful so to be this here. This is a fun, this is, for now, this is a fun one for you. You're not out here trying to beat the competition, but yeah. out here having some fun and also de development. Exactly, we develop so many things, like we're developing like the blow -off, electronic blow-off control with the Turbo Smart. So it has like 40 milliseconds response time from the throttle instead of like a, a 400 milliseconds on a, on a regular vacuum activated blow up so that saves the supercharger we have uh, the trim control through the fuel tech so i can adjust the nozzle to the race we have our newer injectors like big injectors all sensors the billet oil pan the billet intake so we've been developing so many parts with the data log we're collecting it's what is helping us to develop this part so I honestly this is my biggest motivation if you look all my cars and my projects uh, i usually go for one go to fix something and uh, kind of show uh, some solution and i mean bring, bring that as well thank you this thing looks wild let's actually take a peek here and uh, walk us through here so you said this is um g4 to 2 g4 1450 1450 yeah that's a that's a big thing. yeah i mean look look at that compared to the size of your hand yeah <laughs> and it's a massive turbo it pulls immediately like it's impressive this, this jet ski is revving right now with 55 pounds of boost is revving 10,700 but you come in the on the throttle it, it comes up immediately so the turbo fits the supercharger the supercharger goes to a massive intercooler here so it's a massive intercooler here in the front from Fizzle and then we have the the electronic blow off after that and then we have here the fuel tech is is mounted here on the stock placement harness and then we have all data like this is our we're collecting all the temperatures before turbo i mean after turbo after intercooler after supercharger uh, we have uh, sensors okay, everywhere. Yeah, we have electronic waste gates here. Oh, wow. So uh, all the, what I like, all the technology sensors yesterday. possible and again, we have on this jet ski. That's awesome. Are you able to, like, turn up the constellation bracket? Yeah, sure. 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 Yeah, sure.